So, I'm going to attempt to fix my NGWE AP2 disc brakes. There are lots of crazy people out there who buy the bike, go, ooh, this is squeaking, and then buy new brakes. Like, eh. Well, we're not going to go to that extremes unless we have to go to them extremes. So, in this video, right, I'm going to start from the end and go to the beginning. Kind of the end. You see, what you're supposed to do when you get new disc brakes is break them in. Uh, when you break them in, you basically ride really, really fast, like about 10 miles an hour or something, and then break all of a sudden, not too hard, but not too soft. And the way I've been braking has been very, very softly indeed, because I'm like uh, 20.7 stone at this moment in time. If I break too hard I might go over the handlebars along with the bike and uh, I'm a little bit cagey and things like going over and crashing and hurting myself and things like that um, but I have had the bike over a month and my disc my disc brake so my braking hasn't really improved I mean, a slightly improvement maybe but not in the rain that, that's just got wild that's noisy so I'm going to do this video might be long, or it might be short. The very first thing I'm going to do is clean the rotors with some of this. Isopropo 99% actually originally bought this for something. What did I buy it for? Cleaning E6. By the way, this is an E6. I, 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 yeah. 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 I'm just going to have a little vape. Get that nicotine rush into my brain so I know what I'm thinking about and stuff. Yeah, there we go. Right, so, the first thing you need to do when you get new brakes, or new bike that is, new bike, not new brakes, new bike, is break them in by cycling and going, and then stopping, cycling, stopping, cycling, stopping. And to be honest, we have done that. I've been going down hills and stuff, so that can't be the problem. The second problem, working your way from end to beginning, is cleaning the rotaries. Like I'm saying, I'm going to clean the rotary with this. And of course, you know, with the brake pads on the rotary, it's, it's been getting um, dirty on the um, brake pads. So, you know, I'm going to have to clean them eventually, but I ain't got the tools to do that just yet. So I'm waiting for the tools to come. But well, they'll be in this video anyway. It's just that when I press stop, I can make another video and then blend it to this video so it looks like it's all the same video, even when it's not. So, yeah, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to show you. I'm going to clean the rotaries, that sodding light, with that and some paper towels. And um, if it is the rotary, right, it should half work uh, because. The rotary will be clean and only the disc pads will be dirty. So it should still work. And if it does work, then I will still need to do the disc brakes anyway. But like I say, you need this little tooly thing. Uh, it's like a multi tool. You twist it round, take it out, take the brake pads out, and then clean them. Now, the thing is, there are three ways to clean brake pads. Number one, you use isopropyl. And then you let it dry out, I think. And then you use sandpaper and you go, ee, 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 ee. it's not an ear, it's like, <laughs> and then you do that on both ones until they all get nice and goldly sparkly. And then you put them back in your bag. But then you'll have to also clean your rotaries as well because there would have been dirt on the bit of hands going onto your new clean rotaries what you clean. So there's that way. The second way is you can take out your brake pads and you put ferro liquid on them, right, and then you rub them together with the brake pads and that. And then you put them under hot water until they're all nice and goldly sparkly again. Uh, and then the third option is, is put isopropyl on them and set it on fire. Um, there's actually a fourth one. Um, I think you've got to put isopropyl on and then blowtorch it. Um, I'm an expert in blowtorch. I've actually got a blowtorch, so that, that might be an actually good option for me to use a blowtorch that I've hardly ever used. Because I used to use that on E6. And how would you use one of those on E6? 
you don't have to put it in YouTube search. But yeah, this is five minutes of me telling you what I'm going to do or may not do. Um, yeah. Now, if none of that works, right, then the other thing is you have to do the alignments, which I'm not looking forward to doing alignments. I don't know anything about e-bikes. I'm just guessing. I was, it's a good job. YouTube exists for me to go all over the place and find out all about these all ideas so I can do all these things and put them into practice because no bike shop will touch my bike because uh, the, the size is, you know, they see a nice little bike, oh I can do that, they see a bigger bike, all it is, you know, the things are just a little bit touchy bigger and they're like, oh no, I can't touch that, it's too big even though most of the stuff on a big bike is the same because the only thing that's big really is the tyres and they're like, oh my god, that's like 10 million times bigger than a normal bike, I can't touch it, no, please stop I should own a bike shop. You know, one day I could own a bike shop and be able to fix all these bikes for everybody just because I'm learning. It's like I went to Alfred's to fix a tyre and said, oh, no, I can't just that. The tyre's too big. Do you mean it's too big? You do car wheels, for Christ's sake, you know. Uh, but it taught me one thing. It taught me how to take my wheel off. It taught me how to put my wheel on back on properly. It taught me how to do a puncture repair. It taught me how to glue my wheels. I couldn't have done any of that without being forced into a corner and learning to do stuff myself. And luckily, I'm in my thir late 30s and I can um, start learning stuff nowadays because in my younger days, I was good at learning stuff. I was like really, really poor at learning stuff. But my head seems to be slimlining. The more hair I lose, the more intelligent I get. Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah, we're going to do all those things. And then if none of those things work, we have to like balance stuff out and calibre stuff out. And considering it's a new bike, I don't think you have to go that far down the rabbit hole. So this time, the first thing we're going to do now is clean our rotaries back in a moment. So this is the mad thing is, when I lift the um, thing up, there's no squeaking. About zero squeaking. Um, but if we look at that there, there's a bit of dirt on that. So definitely need to clean this one. Looks alright. Still we've got to clean them both anyway. So First thing, get some gloves. Make sure there's no flames around. Uh. I mean, these gloves don't really fit me that great. With hands. I haven't got any micro cloth, so I'm just doing this. It is a smelly job, the size of purple. So, that's um, just um, do this. There you go, a bit of dirt on there. Not sure if we've got it, yeah, just got to do it around there, and I. <coughs> Uh, 
Should have kept an eye on that, see where it was. Remember, don't touch that with your hands. So I'm wearing gloves just in case. Right. Yeah. Oh crap! Way too much. Hope I don't have to buy any more. Right. Pretty sure you have to do the other side. Dirty. Now we'll do the other side now. Right, well, I'll be back in a minute. Yeah, if you can notice that, there's rust starting to build up. I've only had it a month. I leave it indoors and I've got rust. Um, that must be a problem right there. Right, I am on um, my bike heading towards the rain. Just a quick test, but watch this. Oh, there's a little bit of a squeakage. I'll have to turn my bike on. Try and get a bit of speed. Not too much. There we go. I'm not on my chest mount, just on my normal phone. I have a, a little bit worried about it. Rust. Right, let's do a speed brake test too. And as you can see, or here, there is no more squeaky. I don't know why we're squeaky. Do a pass free test. Well, I get past these bumps anyway. A little bit of a squeak. There we go, bit of squeaky back. Right. The good news is, I've kind of fixed it, especially at low speeds. High speeds, it's a bit more squeaky. But, all I did was put an isopropyl on it. There we go. One more to test. And the brakes are now working. I'm going in before it starts raining, man. This is the M21. All you need. His eyes are purple and find out why the soddy now the rotaries are getting rusty later later. So there you go. Fix the squeaky brakes. Not 100 percent Everything under 15 mile an hour, the brakes are good. Um maybe it needs time to bed in or something. Or over 15 mile an hour or 14, 15. It does squeak a bit. Like I say. The chances are, there was a lot of quite a lot of uh, crap on those rollers, and some of that would have went onto the brake disc or the brake pads. So, 
when all my stuff comes, I'm going to clean my brake pads and find out why the hell my rotary is rusty after a month, even though I've been in the rain like three, four times, no longer than an hour, and it's already starting to rust, and I keep it inside the house. So, you know, that's a good thing about doing it by yourself. You find things that you didn't really spot, you didn't really notice, and then you can try and find them out later on, which I'm probably going to do about the rust. So, I hope this has helped you. Just take your brake pads out anyway. Give them a nice little clean, like I said. I'm going to do that video, so you might, so just in case you can't find what to do. And do that video another time. And just do your isopropyl first and see if it works out for you. And you're buzzing. See you later. So this is the intro audio one. Say right to the tide. I need to work on my catchphrases. <laughs>